opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers stay up to date with all things cricket subscribe to crick buzz's youtube channel and press that bell icon now Zimbabwe came into this India ODI series with a lot of confidence. They'd beaten Bangladesh at home in T20Is as well as in ODIs. But when they met India in this first ODI, it was a different story altogether. They were nowhere close to the quality of Indian team. India beating Zimbabwe by 10 wickets in the first ODI, completely outplaying the hosts in every department. Here is how it all panned out. India's captain KL Rahul won the toss and opted to field first on a track that seemed to have a lot of moisture. This was a very early start, quarter past nine start in Harare, which meant there was moisture to be taken advantage of in the track. And Indian new ball bowlers, especially Deepak Chahar, on a return from injury, made no mistakes. He was rusty to begin with, lost his run up on the very first ball when he came into bowl, but then slowly warmed up. And once he warmed up. He did what Deepak Chahar is known to do. He swung the ball both ways. He hit the right areas. Used the short ball to great effect. Picked three wickets. Bowled seven overs on the trot. A big testament to his match fitness as well. And he will take back a lot of confidence from this game. Then there were three first for Akshar Patel and Prasid Krishna as well. Both of whom who bowled really well, especially Akshar Patel, because the moment he realized that there wasn't a lot of turn on offer for him on this track. He stuck to bowling wicket to wicket, which meant that he did not allow the batters to go and score freely. Keeping a tab on the score meant that wickets were going to come not only for him but for Prasad Krishna at the other end as well. As for the Zimbabwe batters, there wasn't much to write home about. Of course, Captain Chakabba, who came in in the 11th over, top scored in the innings, but at 110 for eight, Zimbabwe seemed to be struggling. But then there was that face-saving partnership for the hosts. Brad Evans and Engarva contributed with the bat, and how? Remember, Zimbabwe were 110 for eight, but the duo added 70 runs of 65 balls, which included two hits over the fence as well. Which meant that 189 was all that Zimbabwe could manage to put on the board. Shubman Gill and Shikhar Dhawan strode out to bat. Two batters who'd made it a habit of sorts to score these big partnerships since that West Indies ODI series, and this time around they weren't going to make a change, especially Dhawan. Who seemed to be in the form of his life at the moment didn't seem to be in any trouble. Kept pacing the innings perfectly to ensure that there was no pressure on Shubman Gill at the other end at all. Gill seemed to be in some sort of a loss of flair, especially towards the start of his innings. But by the time he approached his own half century, he was getting in the groove as well. He was in that momentum as well. Both the batters scoring half centuries. Both the batters remaining unbeaten by the end of the game. India winning the game by 10 wickets with over 19 overs to spare. That's the story of the game. Then Zimbabwe have a lot to think about come the second ODI. Their batters just could not put up the kind of resistance that they would have liked, especially their star batter Sikandar Raza. As for India, they've ticked most boxes. KL Rahul's runs with the bat is perhaps the only thing that we couldn't see in this game. That is because of such a spectacular opening partnership. Between Shikhar Dhawan and Shubman Gill, but overall, as India take a 1-0 lead in this series, they don't have anything to be unhappy about.